I'm Clever Ghoul, but you can call me Nikki. Welcome back to the channel. This week, it's actually my birthday. So this week, I'm teaching you how to make a party staple, the pinata. Now, I've made plenty of pinatas before, but I've never attempted a spooky pinata. So this week, we're making a ghost pinata, which is just perfect for this birthday ghoul. Now, before we get into it, do you want the good news or the bad news? Good news first? Okay. The good news is this is a very easy project that doesn't take too much skill. It's very beginner friendly. The bad news is that it is very time consuming. It's just a lot of cutting and gluing a lot of time to cut out all the strips and do all that so it's something to keep in mind when making a pinata at home you want to have ample time so I thought this was only gonna take two hours or so and then it took me six which reminds me of art school because they always told you however long you think a project is going to take triple it and they're right I knew it was gonna be time-consuming but I did not realize how long it was going to take with that being said let's get into it for materials, you'll need the following. Cardboard, preferably corrugated. Usually any box you get a package in will be corrugated already, so that's what I used. A metal ruler, X-Acto knife, and a cutting mat. Hot glue, fringe scissors. You can use regular scissors, but they will add on more time to the process. Black and white tissue paper, measuring tape, masking or scotch tape, yarn or string. First, figure out the size that you want. I just based my size on the cardboard box I was using for the base, but it ended up being about 13 and a half inches tall by nine inches across and three and a half inches deep. To make the body, I used a plate to trace the arc at the top and then used a ruler to draw the sides. Then with an X-Acto knife, I carefully cut out the body shape. I traced the piece I had just cut out onto another piece of cardboard and then cut that out as well. It can be really tricky cutting curves. The best way to get a smooth arc is to cut very slowly and carefully. Once that was cut out, I took the measuring tape along along the outer edge of the ghost to measure how long the connecting pieces had to be. I wrote down the size and then divided that in half so that I would have two side pieces. Next, I used an existing side piece from a cardboard box since it was already the width I had wanted to use. It's up to you to determine the width for your pinata, but when you're cutting that piece, make sure that you're cutting it so the corrugation in the cardboard is horizontal and not vertical. That way, when you go to bend the piece of cardboard along the body shape, it will easily go the direction of the curve of the ghost. I used those body pieces to figure out how long I needed the bottom to be, and I made sure that that bottom piece would also be the same width as the side pieces that I'm cutting out so that everything lines up when it's glued. Then I measured the thickness of the cardboard middle pieces, marked it on the bottom piece, and trimmed off those edges so the bottom edge will fit flush against the sides of the ghost. I also made a line on the ghost bodies to mark off where I wanted the bottom to hit the ghost bodies. Next, I bent the side pieces along the corrugation and began to apply hot glue starting at the bottom, stopping before the curve. At the very end of that first side piece, I made a four inch flap that I bent back and did not glue down. Then I applied glue along the top of the curve, stopping at the fold of that flap and held everything down to dry. This flap should hit the top center of your pinata and will be used not only as the opening to fill your pinata with treats, but also where you're going to put the string to hang the pinata. So having it hit at the top center of your pinata is key. For the second middle piece, I pulled it out, bent it like the first one, and measured it out so that it overlaps with the edge of that flat about a quarter of an inch or so. Trim off any excess and then glue it down along the edge of the ghost base body fully. Next, I glued in the bottom piece and held it in place while it dried. Once everything was dried and secure, I attached the other body piece on top very carefully, making sure that I left that flap open and free of glue. Then I put a mark on the center of that flap and with an X-Acto knife made a tiny X cut. I cut out a piece of string, I did about 12 inches and folded it in half and pushed it through the hole I just made. Then I put multiple nuts in the end of that string on the inside of the pinata and hot glued it down for extra security. The pieces that hang out will be used to hang the pinata later. Now it's time for the tissue paper. I took out three pieces of tissue paper and kept them on top of each other, then using a ruler made multiple one and a half inch strips. Because the tissue paper is so thin, I kept it so each strip has three layers. I cut out roughly 14 strips per side. Depending on the size of your pinata, you may need more or less. Then I applied masking tape on the outer strips before adding a thin layer of glue along the top of the bottom layer strip and the middle layer strip. That way all three strips are actually glued together. I marked off half inch increments across the body. However, when I started gluing the strips down, I realized I liked a one inch distance better. So I put down lines on the body as a guide to let me know where to glue each strip. Then I glued down my first strip and carefully cut the fringe while it was glued down onto the cardboard. I should have done this prior to gluing. In fact, when you do this at home, I recommend that once you attach your strips together, you take your fringe scissors and you cut about two thirds to three quarters up that strip and go all the way across before gluing it down. I don't know why I chose to make this more difficult for myself, but I did, 
so just do as I say and not as I do. Now for the size I had, I had excess ends hanging off the edges. Now you can either cut those off or you can leave them and we can use them for the sides later. I personally left mine so that I could use them for the sides and they turned out just fine. But if you're really particular, maybe cut them off and make separate individual strips for the sides. Continue going all the way up the body, but when you get to the very top strip, I recommend that you just glue the strip together and don't use any masking tape so that you don't see a line of masking tape on your pinata as it'll be really obvious and look weird. I also made sure to glue down the edges all the way around the curves here and cut any excess off so that we still get the shape we want. Repeat the exact same process on the back and for the sides, if you cut off the excess, then you'll make new strips here. But if you didn't and you're like me, glue down your excess pieces one side at a time. So add a line of hot glue, then press down the left side, add another line of hot glue and press down the right side so that they overlap and stay on the same level or guideline from the body. Continue all the way up. I would recommend cutting off the excess strip once you hit that curve piece of your pinata, cutting them off because otherwise they're gonna stick out kind of funny and not sit right. You will have to make additional fringe strips for going all the way along the top as well as covering that flap. And you'll notice here that the two sides will meet and they'll be going different directions. And when that happens, just leave it for now and I will show you in a little bit how we're gonna disguise that. Once the body is done, figure out the face you want, the size you want it to be, and then draw it out on some cardboard and cut it out. Make sure to cut out two faces, one for the front and one for the back. I went with a standard sort of ghost face, so there ended up being four eyes and two mouths total. Next, I took out a sheet of black tissue paper, glued down the cardboard face piece to it, and cut it out so there was an excess square around it, and then essentially wrapped it almost like a present, pressing all the sides into the back and hot gluing them down so that they stayed down and so that the eye just looked flat, black, and smooth. I repeated this process with all of the face pieces. You can either be done here and leave these without fringe and just glue them onto your pinata, or you can make them fringe to match the rest of your pinata. I did the latter. I basically did the same process as the white strips, having three layers, cutting them out. However, I only made these strips for the eyes and mouth one inch thick. I marked off on the eyes and mouth half inch spacing. I also made sure to cut the fringe out of the strips before I glued them down. Some of the fringe wanted to stick up here, so I would lift a line of fringe up, put a thin line of hot glue and press it down just to kind of get it to lay a little more flat. Once glued down, I used regular scissors to trim the longer fringe to match the size and shape of the facial features. Once the facial features were done, I laid out where I wanted them to go and then glued them down. I made sure to put them on the same placement on both sides. Now it's time to fill your pinata. Now when it comes to filling up your pinata, I think it's important to remember that you are making this pinata however strong it is. I wouldn't put super heavy things in there. I'd put more light candies and stuff like that, but I would check the weight as you're going to make sure it seems like it's not gonna fall apart. Obviously, if you need to make it stronger before you put on the tissue paper, you could always put some duct tape down or really just more hot glue. Keep in mind when filling your pinata is what am I actually filling it with and how strong do I need to make this pinata? It's kind of important for the structural integrity and so that it doesn't fall apart before you start hitting it with a stick. Once it's filled, hot glue that top flap closed and hold it down to make sure it securely attaches to the opposite edge. To camouflage the fringe here that's going in two different directions, you're going to cut out a strip of white tissue paper the same as before. One and a half inches thick, three layers of paper, and you're going to make sure it's the right width of your pinata. This time though, you're gonna separate the three pieces. On the inner bottom piece, put hot glue going down the middle. Then place the middle piece on top of that and add another layer of hot glue on that middle piece. And then lastly, put the top layer on top of that so you have the three layers all glued together in the middle. Then cut fringe on both of these sides, careful not to cut into the middle so that you have a piece with fringe on both sides. Next, glue that strip down over the edge of that flap that you had just glued down, hiding the seam and blending the fringe directions on that center piece. Now it's time for the reveal. Ta-da, here she is. Here's the final project. I'm not using this pinata to actually fill with goodies and beat up. For me, this is gonna be purely party decor and I think it turned out really great. The great thing about all the fringe on a pinata is that you can't really tell if there's any mistakes. So I think she looks really good and I'm really excited to hang her up for this weekend. Now, obviously we went with a ghost because it's my birthday and as clever ghoul and well, the birthday ghoul, I have to be represented appropriately in my party decor. So I'm really curious, if it was your birthday, what kind of pinata would you make? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And to all of my fellow Geminis and June babies, I just want to wish you a happy birthday. I hope you're having an absolute blast and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!